Hi, and welcome to Canterbury Cottage. In today's video, I'll be making over this patio. Just a week ago, it was a barren paved area behind my house, and no one, including the cat, wanted to spend any time here. But after implementing just a few easy and budget-friendly ideas, it is now a cozy extension of my home, full of cottage charm. So if you're ready for some new ideas for your outdoor space, let's get started. I have a small slate patio behind my house, and just a week ago, this is how it looked. I had added some new plants to the pots, but as you can see, that is about all I had done. It's a cozy spot, but in the middle of the summer with all that stone, you can feel like you're sitting in an oven. So after living here for eight years, we finally decided to install a pergola. I wanted something big and sturdy, but something that we could assemble ourselves. I loved this metal one by Gardasol because the louvered roof would allow me to adjust how much sunlight was coming through. It's also rain and snowproof. The pergola came in three large, heavy boxes. One box contained the four posts and four crossbeams, and the other two boxes contained the ceiling louvers. The directions were super easy to follow, and the only tool I needed was a screwdriver. In fact, one person could easily construct this by himself with the assistance of a second person just to help lift and hold the posts for a couple minutes. And it only took a little over three hours to assemble. I am obsessed with this pergola. It is exactly what I wanted and I am beyond happy with it. Now, before I run out to buy a bunch of new stuff to put under my pergola, I decided to assess what I already have. In case you're wondering, almost all of my patio furniture has been picked up at thrift stores over the years. I recently thrifted this little side table for $4, and it just needed a fresh coat of black paint. And now it looks brand new. If you saw my recent thrift haul video, then you know I picked up some new pillow covers at the Amazon Clearance Center for just a few dollars. I filled them with an old Christmas pillow and some pillows that I picked up at the thrift store. These gray Goodwill pillows are actually covered in sunbrella fabric. Now, with the pergola protecting the pillows from rain, they should last much longer. Nothing makes an outdoor space quite so cozy as adding a rug. I chose to buy carpeting off the roll, paying by the square foot, so that I could get a large, durable carpet for not a lot of money. Not only is it cheaper than buying a pre-made rug, but you can also get the exact size that you need. I am always looking for easy but chemical-free ways to remove weeds from my yard, so I thought I'd try this weed burner. It takes about 30 seconds to burn each weed, so it's not great for large areas, but it did do a fantastic job on the grass tufts growing up around this tree. You have to be careful though because sometimes the weeds catch on fire. A few years ago, I found a metal chair on the curb and brought it home and stuck it on my patio. And as far as I know, no one has ever sat on it. So using an angle grinder and a sawzall, I cut a large circle out of the seat so that a wire hanging basket could just fit inside. Then I used my angle grinder to remove any sharp edges. I added a cocoa liner to the basket and then I used spray adhesive to attach pieces of sheet moss to the remaining sections of the chair seat. 
The hanging basket that I used on the chair I had purchased full of flowers, which I planted in pots on my patio. But I did return one of the flowers to the basket. I also added a couple small ivy plants, hoping that they would grow up and around the chair back. We really had no good place to store firewood on our patio, so I decided to see if I could build something just using the wood scraps in my garage. For the top and bottom of my box, I cut two pieces of wood to the width of an old bench back. I also cut two shorter pieces for each side. Using wood glue, I attached the two sides to the top piece. Then I cut two scrap pieces of wood and glued those into each corner where the two boards joined together for extra support. I glued the bottom piece on and then I went around the entire box attaching all the pieces of wood together using my nail gun. Then I nailed a bench back to the top piece of wood. This was a curb find that I once had hanging in my foyer. I cut another scrap of wood to the width of the box and attached it just below the bench back for extra support. So that the box wouldn't sit directly on the ground, I attached two scraps of wood to the bottom of the box. I had some furring strips left over from Amaya's kitchen table, which I cut and nailed to finish off the front of the box. I lightly sanded all the wood with 220 grit sandpaper. I sprayed the entire bench with Zenser primer to seal in the stain on the bench back and to even out all the different wood tones. When the primer was dry, I rolled on some semi-gloss black paint that I had on hand. I used a brush to get in between the lattice work of the bench back. I could hardly wait for the paint to dry to load it up with firewood and throw some cute pillows on that bench. You could easily make one of these for yourself, even if you don't have a nail gun. You could hammer in the nails or use screws instead. In my opinion, a patio just isn't cozy without a lot of plants, but plants are expensive. So look around your yard and see what you could move to your patio. I had two small evergreens in pots on my front porch, but one of them died over the winter, so I transplanted the other one to a pot and moved it to my patio, much cheaper than buying a new tree. I also had two faux trees with twinkle lights on my front porch that I thought would be just perfect to frame out my patio doors. And I swiped a few house plants to create this terrarium to sit on top of the fire pit when we don't have a fire going. Another way to save money on plants is to buy large hanging baskets with a variety of plants and then separate them out into separate pots. I filled five different pots from two hanging planters that I purchased on clearance at Sam's Club and I filled another five pots with two large ferns I purchased at Walmart. Be sure to water your plants immediately to help them get over the shock of being transplanted. I love to add things to planters that aren't plants. That way, even if the flowers aren't blooming, the planters still look interesting. One of my favorite things to add is old outdoor lanterns. For an additional surprise, I like to put a small plant inside the lantern. I also like to pick up small statues when I see them at the thrift store. I picked up this ceramic bunny just last week at Goodwill. I think he looks perfect on my chair turned planter. I recently picked up these fun shaped watering globes from Amazon and I added a little food coloring to the water to give them a punch of color. I also like the cottage appeal of sticking some colorful plates into my planters. 
I specifically wanted a clematis plant this year, and I used some command strips to help train it so that it will eventually grow and wind around the pergola post. I'll link last year's patio video if you'd like to see how I made this solar globe from Dollar Tree items. This ceramic leaf was another goodwill find. I'm hoping the birds will bathe and drink from it. Mushrooms are so trendy right now, so I decided to make a couple to add to my patio. I used wood glue and a wood screw to attach spindles to two wood salad bowls. I couldn't decide whether or not to paint the mushrooms, but ultimately I decided to leave the spindles and paint the salad bowls. I painted one with white chalk paint and the other with dark purple chalk paint. I applied two coats of paint and when the paint was dry, I applied polka dots using a sponge dauber. How cute do these look in my planter chair next to my bunny? Originally, I was going to put these mushrooms somewhere else, so I may repaint them so that the colors coordinate better with the ceramic rabbit. Not only do I like to put unexpected things in my planters, but I also like to use unexpected things as planters. I picked up this plaster column at Goodwill for just $2.99, and I used a hammer to bust out a hole in the top so my plastic pot would fit inside. I used a little ivory spray paint on the outside to tone down the gold accents. Then I used part of one of those Walmart ferns to fill up the pot. I'm really happy with how this turned out, and I think it looks like a planter you would find at a pricey garden center, not a $3 thrift store find. While working on this video, I saw a male and female cardinal in the trees outside my patio, and so I knew I wanted to make a bird feeder for them. I had previously removed the glass and electrical from an outdoor wall mount lantern that I thrifted for $5. I tied a large knot in a piece of rope and ran it through the hole at the top so that I could hang it from a tree branch. I used Gorilla Glue to attach a small can to the inside where the light bulb had been. Then I spray painted the can with some black spray paint so that it would match the lantern. I used a Dollar Tree S-hook through the loop in the rope to hang it from a branch, and I used an old watering can filled with birdseed to fill the tin inside the lantern. I didn't have anything to store my hose on near the patio, so I decided to make a hose stand using an old spindle that I had in the garage. I just drilled a couple holes on either side of the spindle and then used screws to attach some old shelf brackets that I had on hand. I didn't even bother repainting it. I just dug a hole near my spigot and stuck my new hose stand in the ground, perfect for holding a lightweight hose and a watering can. Use a fence or porch post if you wanted to hold a big heavy hose. Last year, I thrifted an old chandelier and used its parts to create a plant stand and a wind chime slash candelabra. This year, I decided to make a chandelier for the birds. I spray painted four small birdhouses from the Dollar Tree. Then I drilled a hole in the bottom of each birdhouse. I had previously gutted a chandelier, removing the light bulb, candle tube, and candle cup. I'll be sure to link that video in case you're interested in seeing it. I applied Gorilla Glue to the screw at the end of each chandelier arm and then screwed on the birdhouse. I doubt any birds will be moving in there, but it is so cute. I need to find a way to add some lights, so if you have some ideas on how I could do that, 
be sure to let me know. Speaking of lighting, I always add inexpensive solar lights to my planners, but this year I added some fairy lights in a very interesting way. I bought a set of solar-powered rainfall fairy lights, which I'll have linked in my Amazon store. I ran the lights through the spout of a ceramic teapot, and then, using florist wire, I attached the teapot handle to some metal decor that I had already hung on my brick wall. And to make the lid look like it had fallen off of the teapot, I wired it to the metal wall decor too. I can't wait to see how this looks once it gets dark. The solar panel that powers it is in the pot just below. If you were thinking that my patio could still use a few finishing touches, I totally agree. In fact, I just received a package that I can't wait to open and show you. That's why next week's video will be full of even more ideas for sprucing up your outdoor spaces. If you're still here, thank you so much for sticking around until the end. Did you happen to see the moving van in the street in some of today's video clips? Well, sadly, my neighbors are moving to West Virginia. But before they left, they gifted me a lovely vintage wicker rocking chair. So be sure to share your love of all things vintage and used because people really are so very generous. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.